Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Moscow Telecommunication Seminar. Our today's speaker is Igor Gendavitsky. Igor Gendavitsky has received a bachelor's degree in applied mathematics and physics at the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology last year. His bachelor thesis was devoted to the experimental study of capture effects in smartphones and Wi-Fi access points. And the main contribution was the development of a USRP-based Wi-Fi testbed. Currently, Yugor is a research uh, intern at the Wireless Network Lab at the Institute for Information Transmission Problems and first year master's student at MIPT. Today, he will tell us about the approaches to model the wireless channel in modern MIMA systems. Yugor, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh... Uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, my presentation uh, will be will consist of of two parts. The first part uh, will be about uh, modeling uh, single input, single output uh, feeding channel. I'll start with the fundamental uh, notion of tap delay line. Then um, we'll tell about relay and receive fading and uh, when they uh, emerge. Then I'll, uh, I'll tell about two implementation, uh, Jake's model and uh, filtered white Gaussian noise. Uh, then I will move on to MIMA fading channel, TGN and Quadriga. Uh, first one uh, uses uh, some techniques uh, from CISO fading channel generation. So uh, the first half uh, is also useful. So uh, let's start. Uh, now. Uh, start with the uh, tap delay line. Uh, the first thing to grasp is that uh, wireless channel is modeled as a linear time variant system. In particular, uh, in particular, a combination of uh, delta function, it's a uh, left upper picture. So it is a time variant impulse response. Uh, what is the motivation for such a model? Uh, for, a, for a signal, there are uh, there might be uh, multiple paths uh, to uh, get to uh, receiver, uh, several reflectors, several scatterers. And uh, what is uh, a nature of time dependence in such model? Uh, for instance, a moving reflector. If a reflector is moving uh, and uh, it reflects the signal uh, that is shifted according to Doppler shift. It may uh, get closer or further, so path loss changes uh, that coefficient. And uh, a direction to reflect, uh, reflect itself changes, so it uh, changes uh, accordingly due to an isotropic radiation pattern. So uh, we have a time varying impulse response, and uh, that yields uh, given input, uh, it yields uh, output y of, y of t. And uh, accordingly, we can uh, define a time variant frequency response. Uh, define uh, now uh, it is a convolution uh, of uh, of inputs uh, expon exponential function with the sum of uh, delta function. So the response is a sum of a, a exponential function with the slowly varying amplitudes and phases. How to work with the tap delay line? Uh, there are two variants. Uh, the first one, uh, when we need a channel uh, in a frequency domain, and uh, uh, correspondingly to the definition, we just need to evaluate uh, the right uh, uh, formula at a set of uh, uh, chosen frequencies. Uh, the second uh, uh, variant is when we need the channel in time domain, uh, in discrete time domain, uh, for example, for uh, uh, waveform uh, simulation. We may use uh, a sampling theorem, given that uh, the waveform uh, is band limited, uh, we may uh, represent our signal uh, as a, a certain series. Time variant uh, impulse response for the discrete system effective can be written as this. This is the second formula on the left. And uh, the resulted uh, waveform 
uh, if we pass uh, discrete uh, symbols, uh, is given in a form of uh, fear filter. So one way uh, to create a single input, single output fading channel is time varying uh, tab delay line, uh, of, which coefficients uh, change through, through time and delays. So uh, we can change them in accordance to some fading processes. Uh, there are two general uh, fading processes. The first one is relay and the second is race. They both model multipass reception for removing antenna from stationary statistical point of view. The uh, first scenario on the left uh, responds to relay fading. Uh, there are uh, a lot of random uh, identically, identically independently distributed uh, reflections uh, or such that central limit theorem works. And uh, they, uh, uh, some which are with each other. And uh, uh, we are asked with the question, what is uh, the resulted envelope distribution? And uh, what is going on with the channel? Uh, when uh, the velocity of uh, antenna equals to one, the envelope uh, is distributed to, uh, according to relay distribution. The question might arise, what uh, it has to do with the time uh, tab delay line. Now, uh, the single tab, and uh, I remind you, tab is uh, a coefficient uh, uh, near delta function, is a sum uh, of many uh, multipaths component that are not resolved by receiver. Uh, a handy example is uh, a tree. It has uh, many leaves and uh, many, many uh, occurrences of reflections uh, uh, take place simultaneously, but uh, they are certainly not resolved by uh, RX, uh, RX ADC. So uh, uh, a uh, temporal evolution of a tap can be modeled like this. The, now, the second variant is a rise in fade. Uh, and uh, uh, the scenario um, conceptually uh, is the same, but there exists uh, one dominant component. And uh, it is usually considered deterministic. Uh, it uh, corresponds to, for example, a line of sight path. Um, uh, and uh, again, uh, when uh, velocity of antenna equals to one, uh, the angle distribution is rising. And the parameter of the distribution is the ratio of powers between loss component is highlighted and others combined. Now, uh, important thing to take from this slide uh, before we move on uh, to implementation of such uh, concepts is that uh, relay, uh, relay uh, fading can be transformed to uh, rising fading. How? Uh, look at, uh, if you may, uh, uh, the formula at uh, the left bottom. Uh, the key uh, that K uh, is um, is a sample from relay fading channel. Now we uh, add to it a deterministic component that is weighted by a uh, care factor. So this is deterministic component and uh, the other is the same because they uh, differ only in one component uh, deterministic. So that was the conceptual idea. Now moving on to implementation. Now, now uh, the question may arise, why do we need uh, to implement if we have a relay distribution? Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, it's uh, easy to calculate analytically the case when uh, speed is zero and uh, it yields a relay distribution. But uh, the channel is statistically flat. It means that it has no uh, frequency selectivity. Now, uh, moving on to Jake's model. It is uh, a way to generate a relay uh, fading process. Uh, and I remind you, we need to, to just generate just a relay uh, fading process because everything is uh, constructed by adding a uh, deterministic component. Now, uh, Jake's model, uh, is a basis for all sum of sinusoids methods. Uh, what is uh, the essence of that 
uh, particular method. Uh, the model is following in the center uh, of, unit, uh, of unit circle, uh, there is a receiver which moves uh, with the, a speed uh, V. And uh, on uh, the very circle, uh, there are uniformly uh, distributed uh, multipath components uh, that um, sends uh, their ref uh, reflection to the receiver. Uh, they don't uh, alt uh, alterate uh, the amplitude, so the amplitude is the same, but uh, they uh, add uh, first uh, the um, random phase, which is taken from uniform distribution. And then uh, there is a Doppler shift, which is determined, uh, determined uh, by um, the angle between a velocity and uh, a direction to multipath component. So uh, the fading uh, process in such model uh, is given by two components, real and imaginary. It's a, it's a complex process. Uh, so uh, Doppler shifts uh, are given by such formula because they are uniformly on circle. Uh, F max is a, a parameter for uh, Doppler uh, fading, it is maximum frequency of Doppler, Doppler shift. Now, uh, uh, the real part is obtained by summon cosine function, and the uh, imaginary part is obtained by uh, summon sine functions. It is worth not noticing that that particular model, though uh, very popular, is uh, rarely, rarely used without modifications due to uh, its uh, drawbacks. First of all, uh, it has non-zero correlation between uh, real part and imaginary part. The second, uh, which is worth, there is non-zero cross correlation between pair of waveforms. So even if we obtain uh, random phases, those uh, fading processes will be somehow correlated. and. Uh, Later in the presentation, uh, we will need to generate a lot of uh, uh, such processes. Now, uh, moving on to alternative method, uh, and uh, I will uh, re re remind you if I, uh, those uh, fading processes are applied to coefficients in a tap delay line. Uh, the second method that uh, uh, implements uh, a fading um, process is called filtering white Gaussian noise. Uh, the step to steps to do are following. Uh, at first, a uh, complex uncorrelated Gaussian process with zero mean and unit variance is generated in discrete time. Then uh, such complex Gaussian processes process is filtered by a Doppler filter uh, with the appropriate frequency response, which equals uh, to square root of uh, desired Doppler power spectrum. Uh, those Doppler power spectrum uh, are different for different scenarios. Uh, here are two pictures of uh, Doppler power spectrums. Uh, the first one on the left uh, is called uh, bell-shaped, Doppler power spectrum, and uh, it is uh, more frequently used uh, in scenarios where surrounding objects are moving. And uh, the second one on the right uh, is a so-called horn-shaped Doppler power spectrum, uh, and uh, it is more frequently utilized uh, when receiver and transmitter are itself moving. Uh, and it's called uh, Jake's spectrum because uh, it, it implements Doppler uh, power spectrum from Jake's model. Question from Artem Krasiov. Uh, could you please explain what is the Doppler power spectrum? What uh, is its physical meaning? <clears throat> uh, thank you for the question. Now, uh, the answer is uh, following. It's a spectral uh, 
it's a spectral power density of a stochastic process that is uh, obtained when a uh, 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 signal is, pass is passed through Doppler fading channel. It means that uh, uh, its, physical, um, its physical meaning uh, is uh, the following. Uh, for example, in uh, uh, Jake's model, it can be easily more uh, hand handily understood. Suppose we have an infinite number uh, of uh, multipath components and each uh, adds uh, its small contribution. Uh, they have uh, different, uh, but, di uh, but discrete Doppler uh, shifts, uh, but uh, th th their contribution changes, uh, differs from, uh, from, fr from frequency to frequency. So uh, it's a uh, spectral density of uh, random process. Which component is uh, is stronger? I, I, I don't know. Then the, uh, another way to tackle it. Uh, suppose we pass uh, a, um, a sinusoid with a particular frequency, uh, and uh, it, it's uh, reflected from many paths components, and uh, it's somehow and somehow we obtain uh, output signal. Now. Uh, we may uh, calculate its power spectrum and uh, uh, average uh, uh, over uh, realizations. So those are random and uh, the resulting spectrum would be uh, uh, a Doppler uh, fading spectrum. That's the physical meaning. Uh, excuse me, just, mm -hmm. just to clarify, so for the JX model, what will be the shape of this uh, uh, Doppler power spectrum for, for JX model, for example? Well, I don't have a formula uh, with myself, but it's uh, one shown in the picture, on the right picture. Okay, so JX model corresponds to the right pictures. Uh, like uh, horn. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for question. I shall uh, continue. So let us comments for, yeah, uh, DGN uh, um, channel model uses uh, filtered white Gaussian noise technique. Uh, and it uh, uses uh, actually a second component, uh, not only bell-shaped, but second component in certain profiles. It corresponds to um, component due to moving vehicle. So yeah, uh, Tijan uses uh, filtering white Gauss noise technique. Now uh, let's uh, move to MIMA fading channels. And uh, we'll start with the Tijan channel over you. So uh, a set of taps uh, and their powers uh, is given in the document. And uh, this is a table uh, from the document. And uh, let us, uh, let, let me empathize that there are access delay, uh, raw uh, and the power. So this is uh, a tap delay line so that we can construct a tap delay line. Now, uh, a reminder, uh, before I will uh, tell the idea of how to generate MIMA channel from uh, several CISO links. Uh, if tap uh, is uh, an loss, so it doesn't uh, have a dominant component, then it's a complex Gaussian variable with certain power and uh, not a mean, relative distribution is the magnitude of complex Gaussian. And without Doppler fading, it has flat the channel away without Doppler fading. And Doppler spectrum, Doppler fading, uh, is obtained by uh, uh, filtering that Gaussian variable uh, through corresponding filter. So uh, the idea of how to generate my channel in uh, 
DGN uh, and uh, uh, later channel models uh, uh, like DJC, DJX, because those are iterative versions of DGN. The idea is following. Uh, generate uh, n takes uh, times nrx iid complex gaussian variables with zero mean and one uh, power and x is the number of transmitting antennas and uh, nrx is number of receiving antennas then we transform them into sa same number of complex gaussian variables but correlated in a, mean in a meaningful way uh, so that uh, correlation between them uh, corresponds to some spatial properties. And then we apply uh, Doppler fading as an, uh, a single input, single output case. So this is uh, an idea for DGN channel. Now uh, let us move on to a little bit of details. Now, uh, in general, for each step uh, of MIMA channel, the matrix is separated in uh, loss and, and loss components. Now, uh, even a uh, first step uh, can be subjected uh, to recent fading. So uh, it depends on recent K factor, <clears throat> but uh, uh, it's uh, multipath components are not resolved by our ADC. So uh, it is possible, and uh, actually it is measured that uh, some of uh, main types actually, actually uh, have some recent be behavior. So for each type of my channel uh, matrix, uh, it is separated in two matrix. The first one uh, corresponds to, it is fixed, and it corresponds to a uh, loss component, which is deterministic. Uh, and as you can see, they are weighted uh, according to a K factor. The second one is a set of uh, IADD Gaussian variables to be correlated. Uh, the actual correlation uh, due to uh, the very properties uh, of uh, Gaussian variables can be done uh, by uh, multiplying uh, on special correlation matrix of the channel. So this is a formula for uh, creating a set of uh, related uh, Gaussian variables, because uh, they are determined by uh, mean and uh, sec second moment d dispersion. Uh, now, uh, the question is how to obtain uh, this matrix. Uh, and uh, a gentle reminder, uh, it is uh, a correlation between every pair of channel links for a given tab. Uh, there is uh, a conjecture a conjecture was made, and uh, in fact, it was uh, proven by some experimental research that uh, 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 a, a certain approximation uh, might uh, have right to exist. Uh, it's called a chronic approximation, which uh, approximates a special correlation uh, of the channel, of, of my channel. Now, uh, that matrix is X, is X, that matrix equals to uh, a Kronecker matrix product of Rtx and Rx, where uh, Rtx and Rx are correspondingly uh, correlation matrix of uh, transmitter uh, antenna array and receiver antenna array. Now, uh, the Kronecker product uh, matrix product uh, is uh, in some way of extension of outer product of vectors uh, for, for matrices. So the dimensions are in order. Uh, and uh, conceptually, it's a uh, chronic matrix product is uh, uh, a multiplication of every uh, every element of matrix with every ma element of matrix of second matrix. So it's uh, conceptually. Now, uh, in TGN channel, we need to uh, obtain those uh, matrices. Uh, that's why uh, some geometric information uh, is written in that table. For uh, there is a certain effect from 
uh, general physics that uh, those matrices uh, for particular type of antenna for uniform array uh, can be calculated using power angular spectrum. Now, uh, what is power angular spectrum? R roughly sp speaking, it is a distribution of uh, power from uh, of angle from a particular cluster for particular tab. So, uh, because uh, a gentle reminder, uh, a tab might be uh, uh, might be a sum of uh, non-resolvable in time multipath components. So, uh, the angle of arrival of signal from uh, that certain tab might be not uh, fixed. It might uh, have some uh, shifts. Shifts. Uh, uh, I mean, in angle, and this is included uh, in that uh, very model. So, power angle spectrum in that model uh, has truncated or placing shape. What does it mean? It means uh, that uh, uh, the class, uh, the, the tap, is uh, reflecting signal uh, in some 3D angle, uh, and its uh, maximum is defined by angle of arrival mean. And uh, uh, the tolerance is defined by uh, angular spread, uh, the receiver and uh, corresponding transmitter. It is a variance of a truncated Laplacian shape. Uh, now, uh, it was shown that uh, angle of arrival and angle of departure can be taken at random uh, from uniform distribution. And they are fixed uh, in a table for reference uh, uh, for reference purposes, because correlation matrices are already uh, calculated for those um, angle of arrival and then for departure. Now, uh, it is handy to take a break here and uh, to explain uh, the difference between clusters and taps. Now, uh, the tap, taps are combined in clusters because uh, uh, they, um, they have a similar distribution of angles. So they have a similar angle spread and single similar uh, angles or maximum of those distributions. So, uh, because for every antenna, uh, a cluster uh, is fixed, uh, there is, uh, and those correlation matrices are calculated for all antennas, we obtain, uh, I, a gentle re reminder, we obtain a, uh, a correlation matrix for the channel. So we can create MIMA links. And uh, for, uh, as for details, uh, it's that's the end. Now uh, there was that was a correlation of channel uh, among uh, different antennas in antenna array. Let's uh, shortly discuss uh, how a mu MIMA is implemented. Now there is a quote uh, from TJC channel model addendum, uh, but. Uh, the very essence of it is that they add uh, some angle diversity, which means that they uh, randomly uh, for every client, for, for every receiver, they uh, randomly change uh, those mean uh, angle of arrivals and angle of departure randomly. And that adds angular diversity. As a result, uh, RTX and RRX, and uh, those are uh, correlation matrices, are different, are slightly different for each user. But uh, power delay profile, profile is the same, so uh, in some way uh, they are connected. Uh, a question from Mishlav Kologinov. Could you uh, explain how the coefficients in TGN were achieved in uh, slide 11? G. Uh, the power difference of different tap uh, in class, it is some interpolation of real experiments or some analytical model was used. It is uh, interpolation of real experiments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, now uh, let's move to uh, a completely different model, but uh, uh, that, uh, that uses the same approach. So uh, a gentle reminder, uh, it's still, uh, presents a channel as a tap delay line. Uh, the essence of that model, which thought 
quadriga is that uh, it is a statistic, so-called statistical tracing model. Uh, it actually doesn't perform ray tracing, but uh, it, first of all, it uh, distributes clusters uh, one randomly in accordance to statistical parameters defined this scenario, uh, distributes uh, in space. Uh, stores some geometrical representation of clusters, for example, uh, an ang angle of arrival from a uh, cluster uh, and uh, angle of departure. Those are geometrical representations and uh, or coefficients. What's more important, uh, all parameters uh, of resulted uh, tab delay lines for every uh, link are calculated based upon positions uh, of clusters plus the interpolation of antennas and then thus uh, radiation patterns. It uh, facilitates MIMA because uh, uh, a natural correlation between uh, links of different antennas uh, naturally emerges uh, because uh, though uh, coefficients of uh, time tab delay lines are different, they originate from the same a set of clusters. And uh, to elaborate, statistical parameters of clusters. What, what are they? First of all, one is delay spread. Its formula is written here. As you can see, uh, there is a summation, summation, summation over uh, a delay and a power of delay. Um, K factor is, uh, uh, as a reminder, uh, is a ratio between uh, loss component and no loss. Uh, loss means line of sight, and loss means uh, non line of sight. Angular spreads, uh, it, uh, Quadriga is 3D model, uh, 3D model uh, and uh, it tracks uh, uh, both uh, azimuth and elevation angles. Uh, this is uh, particular, this is uh, roughly speaking the same as the OS spread, but for Angles. Now uh, let's uh, slightly move uh, to details. Uh, now, uh, Claudio uses a uh, two step, uh, it's a stochastic model, as I said. So it generates clusters randomly, uh, but it does so uh, in two steps. Maybe next slide would be handy, but I will uh, return to the previous slide in a minute. So uh, some uh, information is taken from scenario, a large scale fading uh, is generated and then, uh, then it influences small scale fading. Now let's track those differences uh, for uh, delay spread. Now uh, delay spread is uh, integral for characteristics. So uh, it uh, characterizes uh, some statistic uh, of uh, cluster set. Uh, and uh, in scenario uh, to HGPP, uh, and so on. Uh, there are four uh, numbers. The first one is important is uh, so uh, delay spread well, being a large scale uh, fading parameter is generated using a log, uh, log norm distribution for uh, every position of receiver. Uh, the parameters for log uh, normal distribution, this mu, uh, it's, uh, it is a mean, and this gamma uh, variance. And the third parameter is this lambda. Uh, it defines how fast the this, this varies uh, through space. It means uh, it, it is useful for a mu mima uh, because uh, if we play, uh, because in Padriga, if we place uh, two users uh, near each other, their large scale fading parameters will be, for example, delay spread, will be correlated based on the distance. And the, the order of uh, such correlation is this lambda. It's a uh, part of scenario. Now, that was a large scale fading parameter. Moving on to small scale fading parameters, uh, what are those? Those are a particular set of clusters because they uh, actually define small scale fading. And there is a corresponding parameter, which is called uh, S lambda. What is this? It's a decorrelation distance of all random variables used for generating the small scale fading. Now, uh, to slightly elaborate, let's look at the flow chart. So uh, this, uh, it's uh, obtained from uh, log normal distribution using scenario parameters. 
it's a large scale uh, fading parameter. Then it is used to uh, 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 alternate randomly generated small scale uh, small scale fading parameters, which are actually clusters. Clusters uh, have some uh, delay, which is tau, uh, and um, this is summation over uh, different carrier frequency. Not to, not to, um, it's not important here. Uh, so quadrigory scales uh, randomly generated delays so that the desired delay, uh, the desired delay spread from a large scale parameters is obtained. So th this, that was a uh, special dependence part, but what about uh, temporal fading? Now uh, TX uh, and RX, uh, they move through space. Uh, in Kaligi, you have to actually write it down with a specified trajectory and the speed uh, and the vector the speed is in general the tra trajectory. Uh, there are two variants in, in Quadriga. You can switch between them. The first one, all clusters are generated, but uh, they will be close to the old ones because uh, of the spatial correlation of LSF and uh, SSF. Those are being large scale fading and small scale fading because uh, TX moves a little. Uh, the second variant uh, clusters are the same and their geometric representation is just recalculated. Uh, because if a transmitter is moves, uh, then uh, and cluster stays uh, where he was, it was. Uh, angle of arrival changes, angle of departure changes, and so on. And uh, probably a power changes. So this concludes my talk. Let us recap. <clears throat> There was firstly uh, a general representation of files channel tab delay line and methods to obtain such tab delay line. Firstly, for a uh, case of a single uh, input, single output uh, fading channel. At, uh, this, those are filtered white Gaussian noise and uh, some modifications of some of sinusoids. Uh, then uh, methods for generating MIMA fading channel. The first one was uh, to combine uh, combined correlated CISO channels, and the second one is statistical ray tracing models. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Igor, for your presentation. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, for which uh, technologies uh, both of the model of MIMO models you mentioned uh, are usually used? And the second question is, how, could you somehow compare uh, both models, some advantages that, for example, some uh, model can do that the other cannot? Uh, Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, so th the first one, uh, the quadriga, is, I suppose, uh, is more suitable for uh, solar network simulation because it uh, actually implements uh, some specification, uh, uh, some uh, abstraction of model from 3GPP. So it suits better. Now, uh, in the contrary, uh, TGN and uh, TJC, TJX model suit uh, better uh, Wi-Fi uh, simulation because uh, they are standardized by uh, uh, corresponding uh, working uh, to topic task groups. Now, uh, answering the second question, uh, the drawback of uh, quadriga model uh, is uh, it, it has not. It has no transparent uh, uh, way to uh, model fading, because sometimes it's not convenient to uh, to create a trajectory for every uh, for, for every user. For, uh, otherwise, it's not possible to obtain uh, a fading in quad, quadriga in its uh, uh, default configuration. Uh, uh, but uh, it has a. a, a, a uh, advantage uh, when compared to uh, TGN model. It has uh, some uh, 
uh, interpretable uh, MIMA uh, correlation because those are the same uh, clusters uh, but uh, seen from different antennas. Uh, on the contrary, uh, in the gen model, first of all, the Kronecker uh, approximation uh, is not uh, that accurate. Uh, the uh, error is about 10%. And the second, um, the second, um, those uh, correlation matrices are calculated for uh, uniform linear array. And that uh, is uh, rest restriction. Hope it answers the question. Questions? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question from uh, Dmitry Bankov. Are there any existing unsolved problems related to with model and minor channels? What could be possible direction for research in this area? There were several articles uh, devoted to uh, how to add a uh, fading channel into quadriga-like uh, uh, models, which utilizes clusters. The problem uh, was, uh, so uh, the solution that was proposed is uh, time dependence of uh, existence of clusters. So the process of uh, birth and death, but the problem is that uh, it's uh, very hard to measure uh, uh, the effective rate of such things. So uh, the problem uh, is how to get a convenient uh, uh, fade-in simulation, such uh, model that uh, have uh, particular special characteristics. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, I have one more question. Um, the question is, uh, for which uh, frequencies uh, these uh, models can be applied? Or it uh, completely doesn't depend on frequency, for example, uh, for terahertz or something? Um, I don't know. Uh, so, so the question, those uh, models uh, ha have the limitation. Uh, it uh, might be uh, connected with the, so scenarios for the first model, they uh, were extracted from certain experiments and uh, they have uh, certain frequencies. So, so the answer is uh, yes. Uh, it's an open question whether they can be applied to higher frequencies, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not, uh, uh, I can't uh, swiftly uh, answer that question fully. What's uh, the nature of such um, restrictions? Maybe, uh, yeah, may, maybe uh, because of fa faster, uh, bigger frequencies, uh, the number of uh, taps uh, will be increased significantly. So they might be a co computational. Uh, difficulties and i guess my last question uh for today could you um tell something about uh, do we have uh open uh, implementation of these models or if we want to uh, use it we have to develop it from scratch uh uh, Quadriga model is uh, open source. The gen model, as I remember, the closed source, they, they have been implemented by uh, MathWorks, uh, some of sinusoids uh, with the different modifications is uh, also open source. I guess that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, Igor, thank you for your interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, for also for all the participants of this seminar. See you soon.